Henry Roberts, titular member of that vast, fun-loving group of young people between 20 and 24. But he's also in danger, for this group is responsible for the greatest incidence of venereal disease. Doctor? No need to worry, Mr. Roberts. If it's treated early enough, gonorrhea can easily be cured. But now that doesn't mean that you can't be infected again. There's no immunity, you know. Sure glad I came to see you. Well, it can certainly save you a lot of grief. How would you like to save your sexual partner from the same sort of grief? What's her name? Why? Well, she'll have to be examined. But maybe she doesn't even have it. Maybe, but besides, you'd want her to have the same. Sure, but but if I could come in on my own, why can't she? Well, sometimes a woman doesn't realize that she's infected with gonorrhea. Mind you, the same can go for a man, too, of course. Sometimes the victim doesn't know just how serious his infection is. Sometimes he might think it's something else. The symptoms can disappear in a few days, but the infection doesn't. You see, the best way of preventing the spread of VD is by having the victim, someone like yourself, for instance, give the names of all the people with whom he's had sexual relations recently. I don't want to get her into any trouble, Doctor. Well, she'll be in plenty of trouble if she isn't treated. I, I don't know that... Look, Mr. Roberts, the information on all contacts put down on this card is kept in the strictest confidence. Now, I send it along to the government department which is responsible for this particular communicable disease. It's a sort of a, a clearinghouse, I guess you could call it. The information is then sent on, again, confidentially, to the local health department where a trained worker or nurse gets in touch with the girl. Nobody will embarrass her. She'll never know from the department how they got her name. Why wouldn't she find out? I'd try. Because it's against the law for anyone in the department to say that you or I, or anybody else for that matter, has or has not got a venereal disease. Look, besides, even if a worker or a nurse or a doctor wanted to, they still couldn't reveal your name, because you're only a number on their information card. I repeat to you that anything entered on this card is kept in the strictest confidence. Well, I still think she'll come in on her own. Are you sure? Well, I did. Yes, well, we've been over that before. Look, Mr. Roberts, do you realize what this girl could suffer if her gonorrhea isn't treated? Apparently, you're not concerned. Sure I am. Well, all right, then. Accept your responsibility. Why should I? Look, I don't think I'm the only guy she's been with. What about them being responsible? Well, if that's the case, maybe some of them have. But you don't know, do you? Maybe you're going to be the only one that can save her from the complications of gonorrhea. Things like arthritis, pelvic inflammation. Did you know that pelvic inflammation can lead to sterility? Did you know that? If she ever found out... Look, I've already said she won't. Everything you tell me is confidential. You have my word. All right. Betty Sutherland's her name. Who told you about me? I'm sorry, Betty, but that's confidential. Well, I can be confidential, too. Why should you? It's not fair. I've always taken care of myself, and now this. No, it's not fair. But it's not fair to other people, either. What other people? The other men. What do you think I am, a prostitute? No, Betty, I don't. But even if you were, that's your affair. I'm only concerned about your health and theirs. So? Look, Betty, you have gonorrhea. You may have given it to somebody else or somebody may have given it to you. 
Who gave it to whom doesn't really matter. But what does matter is that if we don't bring the contacts in for examination and treatment, VD will keep right on spreading. Well, certainly I don't go around infecting everybody. I'm sure you don't. But it only takes one person to start a chain of infection which can spread to hundreds of people. It's like a chain reaction, and you're one of the links in the chain. You're not the first link or the last. But you are in a position to help us, and any man you've been with. Oh, I'm sure they can take care of themselves. Possibly. But did you know you were infected? Well, if I did, I wouldn't have waited to be called in. That's right. Then surely you must realize that many people involved in the chain don't know that they're infected with gonorrhea either. Women, particularly. The symptoms are passed off as something else which they believe really isn't very important. Or they may disappear for a while and they think that all's well. But it's not. That's why it's your responsibility to help us and any man with whom you've had sexual contact. Maybe. You will think about it and let me know. When do I come in for my next treatment? I can't remember. Your appointment's for 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. All right. Look, Betty, before you go, let me give you my telephone number. When you change your mind, you can give me a call and let me know. You can be sure it will be treated with the strictest confidence. No one will ever know where the name came from. I don't think I'll need it. Won't hurt you to keep it. Just stick it in your purse. She gave the nurse her wrong address. Then she said that only one man was involved, but she knows better. Not that many, but more than one. She's worried, too. Not a convenient time for VD. Her holidays begin in a few days, but now she'll have to stay in town for treatments. She's trying to remember who infected her. She thinks it might be the fellow she met at a party. Maybe he gave her name to the health department. But she won't admit the possibility that she could infect the men rather than be infected by them. Her kind of pride is dangerous in the fight against VD. Hi. Hi. Come on in. Well, where have you been hiding lately? Oh, tied up, working things. You know how it is. No, I don't. Tell me. Would you like a cup of coffee? Right. Help yourself with a cigarette. I've quit. Terrific. I should too. Here you are. Well then, what have you been doing with yourself lately? I'm sorry about not calling you last week. I was wondering about that. I wanted to, but I, I did get tied up. What's her name? Oh. <laughs> So it is a girl. No, a doctor. A doctor? Well, then what's so funny? It really wasn't very funny at all. The fact is, I picked up something and went to the doctor, and that's when he asked me that question. Well, what did you pick up? Nothing, nothing at all. Well, what is it? All right, I guess I better tell you. Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea? Don't worry, you're probably all right. But maybe you don't have it. Well, I've got it all right. But how did you pick it up? Not from me. Well, let's not go into that. It's too late anyway. The point is, we've got to do something about it. What, for instance? Well... Well, you should see a doctor to find out if you really have it. And then they'll want to know who you've been with. That's none of their business. You didn't tell them my name, did no. you? No. I just gave them the name of the other girl. The other girl... who has carried the disease from one man to another. Her duty now is to link this other man to the forces at City Hall in constant combat with BD. Philip Andrews, age 36, 
just ending an out-of-town business trip. Philip is married and has three children. But his trips away from home often take him to distant towns and distant situations. Laura Perkins, age 23, secretary. She has had one previous sexual relationship with Philip. Last night she told him of her engagement and that she couldn't see him again. But one drink led to another. I guess I can't stand those long drives anymore. How are the kids? Who called? I don't know anybody at City Hall. Well, okay, I'll give them a buzz. See you later. So, you remember the burning sensations when you urinated? Yeah, it had me worried, but I didn't realize what it was. Well, now you know. It's VD. A rough night? Yeah, a little. A few drinks. Was there a girl involved? What's that got to do with it? If there was, then she'll have to be examined. Well, that's ridiculous. She couldn't have given it to me. It's been a couple of weeks at least since I've had the symptom. I wasn't thinking about her infecting you, but about you infecting her. Me? Yes. Unless she was already infected without knowing it. In any case, it's vitally important that she or anyone else with whom you've had sexual relations be examined as soon as possible. My wife? Yes, I'm afraid so. Does she have her own doctor? Hmm? Oh, yes. Yes, her own doctor. Would you give me his name? Well, wouldn't she be suspicious? I mean, a call right out of the blue from her doctor? Not necessarily. You could suggest you get a physical checkup. That way, he can give her a complete physical examination and also do special tests for gonorrhea and syphilis. Syphilis? A safety precaution. It's better to be sure, particularly with married women who could be pregnant. Oh, yes, I see. All right, what's his name? It's, um, Dr. Albert. Robert, I think. He's in the medical dental building downtown. Oh, yes. Before you go, would you give me the name of the girl? Yes, of course, but... If she has gonorrhea and doesn't know it, it could be tragic. Now, it's not worthwhile taking a chance that she may suffer complications and have to be hospitalized. <laughs> but I'd hate to have her know that I told you. Mr. Andrews, your name won't enter into it at all. I simply fill in the details on this card. Your name simply becomes a registration number. When the health department worker interviews the girl, You'll be completely out of the picture. Believe me, the information is strictly confidential. Well, okay. Her name is uh, Laura Perkins. Have you had sexual relations with your fiancé, Laura, since this other incident? Yes. Then he'll definitely have to be examined. But he may be all right. He may be, but then we have to be on the safe side. What am I going to do? We've been engaged for almost a year now. He'll know it was me. You're sure? Oh, yes. I know he hasn't been with anyone else. Then it will be difficult for you. But you know what can happen if gonorrhea isn't checked. Yes. You'll tell him? I'm afraid to. I'm sure you are. I know it won't be easy in light of what you just told me. But then that's all the more reason that you should tell him yourself. Now, there's just one other thing. The other man should be examined, too. Oh, he doesn't come from around here. Oh, that's no problem. If you could tell me his name and address, then the health department there will get in touch with him. Well, what if he finds out I told you? He won't. Your name won't even be known to the doctors or nurses who talk to him. What you tell me is strictly confidential. Believe me. The 
Although gonorrhea is most prevalent in the 20 to 24 year age group, the disease is also striking down more and more teenagers. Gonorrhea has always lurked dangerously among the 15 to 19 year olds, but today it's spreading even among the very young teenagers. For it's not unusual anymore to find youngsters of 12 or 13 infected by a disease they know very little about, if anything at all. What did the doctor tell you? He said I had gonorrhea. Is that the same as the dose? Yes, it is. When did you first notice it? Last week. I was real worried. I didn't know what it was. I was scared to ask anyone. Then someone from the clinic called. How would they know? I expect someone gave them your name. Who? I wouldn't know that. But I know who it was. Do you? But it was Ronnie. Who's Ronnie? Oh, just one of the guys at school. Have you had sexual relations with him? Yes. Recently? Yes. With any other fellows recently? No. Are you sure? It's very important. Because if gonorrhea isn't treated, it can develop into arthritis and other complications. And even more terrible, if your gonorrhea wasn't treated, you might never be able to have a baby. Could be just as tragic for a boy, too. He might never be able to be a father. You wouldn't want that for Ronnie or any other boy, would you? No. Then don't you think you should give me the names of the other fellows so that we can call them in to have them treated? But they'll find out I told you. No, they won't. Everything you tell me is secret. In fact, it's against the law for me to tell where I got my information. None of your friends will ever know. What about my mom and dad? Will they find out I've got a dose? No, not unless you tell them. In some parts of the country, we would have to tell them, but in this city, so long as a boy and girl is over 16, they don't have to be informed. You are 16, aren't you? Yes, I can prove it. And there isn't any reason why you shouldn't give me the names of the other fellows, is there? I guess not. But please don't let anyone find out. I promise, no one will find out. Hello, George. You can come in now. Hope you didn't give up hope out there, George. Time's always a problem with us. So many people to see and only so many hours. Good weekend? So-so. Uh, did you find the number of the girl you told me about last week? I, I guess I must have lost it. I see. You said she was blonde, about five, six, 120 pounds, and you only remember her first name, Kathy. Yes. Pretty average type, don't you think? And the bartender, you said uh, a red-headed bartender at the Savoy Bar knows Kathy. Yes. The manager told me he never had a red-headed bartender. Maybe it wasn't the right bar. Savoy? Yeah, it's the place. No, it isn't. Look, I just don't remember very clearly. George. Yeah. Let's be honest with each other. The girl doesn't exist, and neither does our red-headed friend. Now, isn't that right? I don't know what you mean. It wasn't a woman, was it, George? Look. I'm not here to judge or to criticize. My only concern is for your health. You've been infected with BD. I only want to help you get rid of it and help those with whom you've had sexual contact. Now, it doesn't matter to me whether it was a male or a female. My only interest is health. Do you believe me? I suppose so. I want you to. I want you to have complete confidence in me and in what I'm doing. Somebody has to act on the information you've given me. If it's phony, well, we all waste a lot of time and nobody is being helped in the meantime. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Now, the only way to check the spread of the disease is to examine everyone who has had sexual 
relations with uh, an infected person. If they're not treated, then they just keep on infecting others. How many contacts have you had recently? Ten or twelve, I think. Can you remember their names? Well, I can remember most of the names. Good. Sure, it's easy to suggest to other people that they do this or that. But let's say you are infected with a venereal disease. Chances are you will not be as detached, cool, and collected as you may think. In the face of shame and involvement, duty will be your only guide. Duty to those who are fighting the disease, and duty to your partner in the sex act. And here, duty means naming sexual contacts. Remember, a misguided and false sense of protection can only ruin Nelson's life. 